Welcome in the 13th episode. Today we will start implementing the winline checking logic. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so you will not miss any future video I release. Ok, so let's get started. As you remember in the last episode, we have finished implementing the placing shape logic and today we want to actually start to implement the winline checking logic. So let me actually quickly explain you exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to just draw on the screen now. So we need to separate our grid into the squares. So we need to separate this square. So this is going to be the first square. It's going to be nine small squares. Second square. Third square. Fourth. Fifth. And we want to have like a nine squares all together. So there's going to be nine squares and there's going to be three by three squares in each of this big square okay and then we want to set the colors so the first color first square will hold the this gray color so all of the small squares in this big square will be gray the next square will have only white colors then gray white gray white gray white gray okay so you're gonna you're gonna have something like a checkboard on the grid so when actually player placing the, the square, we're going to check if certain square will be completed, will be filled up with the, with the shapes. OK, so today we're going to set those colors and create the data structure to hold the data for our grid. So let's stop the project. And then first thing we need to do is actually we need to create one script. So let's go to the scripts folder, then go to the game grid. And as you see, I have the line indicator script created, but you don't because I have just created this one off the screen. So just right click inside this folder, create C sharp script and call this script line indicator. So now let's open the script. So as you see, we have the, the class. Let's remove the start and the update function if you have it. And uh, let's make sure this class is empty. So right at the top of this class, we're going to create the data structure to hold the data for our grid. So we can easily check if player has filled up the, the square or the line. So let's quickly do that. So I'm going to create public variable, so public int, and this is going to be the array, square array. I'm going to call it line data will be equal to new int array and we're going to create array 9 by 9 this is because we have 9 squares in each row okay and this array will contain the index for our grid so let me quickly show you that in the unity if we for a second go back to unity and then press play so we have the grids and each of the grid will have an index. So this uh, each of the square will have an index. So the first square will have an index 0, then 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we're going to start 9 from here and carry on with these indexes add until the end. So the last one will be number 80. Okay, because we have 9 by 9 and we're starting from 0. So in this array which we're just creating, we want to store the index for set on line. So let's say for this line, the indexes will be for one, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 8. For the next line, the index will be 9 up to 17. And then we're going to carry on. So we're going to store indexes for every single line like that. OK, then we want to create the array to, to hold the indexes for horizontal line. So there's going to be the another array. So we're just going to put the indexes inside our array. And then we want to create another array to hold indexes for the squares. So for each square, we're going we're gonna to hold the indexes. Hopefully it's visible. So for the first square, we're going to hold index 0, 1, 2, 
9, 10, 11, and then another three numbers from here. For the second square, we're going to call this indexes from those squares, from those squares, and so on. Okay, so we will be e we can easily check if we hit if we complete any of the line or any of the squares based on the arrays we just gonna create it. So hopefully this is clear. So let's now go back to the code and start implementing it. So I will just stop the project and let's go back to our line indicator class. So this is gonna be the line data. So this line data will hold the indexes for the vertical and the horizontal lines. Okay, so let's put indexes for our first line. So the first one will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this is going to be our first line. So the second line will be 9, 10, then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17. Okay, let me just uh, make this a bit more. Just play with the spaces so we have. Okay, so we can see exactly what we have. So let's add another line. So another one will be 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 23, 24, 25, and then 26. Again, I need to just put more space. Okay. And then another line will be the same, but we want to start from 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and then 35, okay, and then another one, so you should have in total nine lines, okay, so I'm just going to fill up myself this array, so this is uh, the completed ar array, so as you see the index is starting from 0 to 8, and I just make a bit, uh, a bit space so between the numbers, so we can exactly see the grids, uh, the squares, as you see, those those one are the, are the squares which I draw you on the on the screen, and we can clearly see the horizontal line and then vertical line also. Okay, so everything is is clearly displayed. So this line data is holding the line, and now let's create another data, and I'm going to call it public int, and it's going to be the square array. So I'm going to call it square data will be equal to new int and length put 9 by 9. Okay, and now in the square data we want to store the indexes. So inside the first row we're going to store those indexes. So this is going to be our first square. Then second square, third square, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, and then last one will be this one. Okay, so let's do that. So in the, inside the first row, we're going to store the 0, 1, 2, 9, 10, 11, 18, 19, 20. So 0, 1, 2, 9, 10, 11, 18, 19, and then 20. Okay, so this is going to be the first square. Now the second square, which is this, so it's going to be 3, 4, 5, 12, 13, 14, 21, 22, 23. Okay, let's get another one. Another one will be this. So this is going to be our another square. So it's going to be 6, 7, 8, 15, 16, 17, 24, 25, and then 26. Okay, 
and then we need to carry on I forgot the brace we need to carry on for the rest of the squares so the next one will be this one then this one this one this one this one and this one okay so let's fill up yourself so here it is my completed completed array so as you see I have all of the indexes completed you should have the nine rows in total so once you've done all of this let's create one public function so right below this data I will pu create public int and let's call it get grid square index okay let's pass the argument int square and then this function we're just gonna return the index from our data from our square data so if you pass let's say square index 0 which is this so we're gonna return that this is the first square if you pass let's say index 70 so we will know this is the the 9 square actually is 8 because the indexing is starting from 0 but we will know which square it is okay so we're gonna just indicate returning the index of the square so let's quickly loop now so for int row equals 0 row is less than 9 row plus plus let's put another loop for int column so call equals 0 call is less than 9 call plus plus we want to put if our square data at row call double equal sign square so if if any of the square from the specific data is equal to the index we pass in we just want to return the row okay so we want to return which row the index is in so this is the the number of the square so if you put this data in exact order as i explained you here you should have the right data in okay and then otherwise outside of this for loop let's return minus one okay so that's it this is very simple function let's save everything now and now let's switch to our grid class so grid so inside this grid class let's quickly scroll right at the top and let's create one more private variable so right at the bottom I will add private line indicator and I will call it line indicator okay and then we need to actually initialize this variable so let's initialize it inside the start method so scroll down to the start method before before we calling this create grid function and let's put the line indicator will be equal to and then get component of type line indicator okay so we're gonna cache our com component to this variable and now let's actually scroll down to spawn grid squares function so inside our for loop we are setting the the image for every single square as you see here and then we are using the row square index to actually check the modular operator but now we can actually use our data which we just created in our line indicator to get the square index and based on the index we're gonna we're gonna set this proper in the proper image so I will just take this square index from here and let's call let's call the line indicator dot get square square index and we want to pass our square index okay so this is the this is the full line so let me actually make this font a bit smaller so we can see the full line okay so this is the full line which we just created which we just manipulated so I just passing the line indicator get grid square index and we passing the square index instead of using the row square okay so now let's save everything 
let's go back to Unity and inside our game scene, so make sure you are in the game scene, go under the canvas, then select our grid and we need to attach our line indicator to this object. Okay, so we grab our line indicator script and drop it here. If you don't do that, you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, the error because, as you remember in the script, we are get we are caching the line indicator in our start function. So make sure you attach this script exactly to this grid object. So once you do that, let's hit play, and as you see, we have. We have created the nice checkboard and now the player can clearly see which square he need to complete to get a point okay so if we're gonna let's say create fill up this square all of those squares should be cleared out and he should be granted with i don't know 10 points or whatever how many points you allowed him to get so that's it for this episode I hope you didn't have any issue with implementing this this data and you understand exactly how this works. So in the next episode we're going to start to implement the actually the line checking logic. So every time you place any shape on the on the grid we're going to check if any of the line or any of the square will be completed. So again if you like this series please consider subscribing to this channel and leave a like. So thanks for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.